Hello, uh, welcome to today's class. Uh, today's class will be on recursive rules. In the last class, we saw how to define rules in Prolog. Uh, and to explain recursive rules, let us start with uh, the ancestor relation. So we want to detect whether uh, X is ancestor of Z or not. And this definition graph shows that if X is a parent of Z, then definitely X is a parent of Z. For this definition graph, as you already know, we can write the rule that X will be a parent of Z. Sorry, X will be an ancestor of Z. So X will be ancestor of Z if uh, it is satisfied that X is a parent of Z. So this would be the rule for this definition graph. However, this is not the only way that X can be an ancestor of Z. Another possibility would be this, which is actually X is a grandparent of Z. So if if it happens that so X would be a ancestor of Z if there exists a Y such that X is the parent of Y and Y is a parent of Z. If this is satisfied that X is the parent of Y and Y is the parent of Z, then also X will be an ancestor of Z. And now for this definition graph, uh, this would be the rule. So as you can see from the rule, X will be a parent ancestor of Z if there exists a Y such that X is a parent of Y and Y is a parent of Z. So this graph can be represented in Prolog using this rule. But what we saw so far are not the only two way that X can be an ancestor of Z. For example, we have another possibility here where X is the grand grandparent. So if X is the grand grandparent of Z, then also X will be a ancestor of Z. So what this definition graph says that if X is a parent of Y1 and that Y1 is a parent of some Y2 and that parent is that Y2 is the parent of some Z of Z then X would be an ancestor of Z. So this is another way how X can be an ancestor of Z. And this and the prologue rule for this graph would be this. So here the rule says that X would be an ancestor of Z if there exists some Y1 such that y, X is the parent of that Y1 and y1 is the parent of some y2 and that y2 is the parent of z then also x would be an ancestor of z similarly we have one more another possibility here where x is the parent of y1 and that y1 is a parent of some y2 and that y2 is parent of some y3 and that y3 is the parent of z so then also X would be an ancestor of Z. And now the rule for this graph would be as shown here. So it says that X would be an ancestor of Z if there exists some Y1 where X is a parent of that Y1 and then Y1 is a parent of some Y2 and that Y2 is a parent of some Y3 and that Y3 is the parent of Z. Then also X would be an ancestor of Z. So as we can see, we can go on like this. Uh, so what would be the stopping point if we keep on going in this hierarchy uh, of the family tree there would not be any stopping point so definitely this would not be a good way to define um, the ancestor relation so however a better way exists of uh, 
defining the ancestor relation of tackling this problem like how far will we keep on going uh, but there is a better way uh, to handle any number of uh, intermediate uh, parents in the hierarchy so and that approach is by using the recursive rules and this diagram definition graph shows uh, the idea behind the recursive rule and it says that if x is the parent of some y and that y happens to be the ancestor of z then x would be the ancestor of z so as you can see to define the ancestor relation we are using the ancestor relation itself it would be more clear if I show you the prologue rule uh, but before we write the prologue rule let us see what this graph means the graph says that for all X and Z X is an ancestor of Z X is an ancestor of Z if there exists a Y such that two conditions have to be satisfied the first condition is X is the parent of Y and the second condition is Y is the ancestor of Z so if both if both this condition X is the parent of Y and Y is the parent of Y is the ancestor of Z is satisfied then X would be an ancestor of Z so that's the meaning of this graph and now for this statement we can write the rule as shown here so it says that um, X would be an ancestor of Z if uh, X is the parent of Y this is the first condition and the second condition Y is to be an ancestor of Z so Y has to be an ancestor of Z so as you can see to define the ancestor relation in the body we again use the ancestor relation and hence it is called a recursive rule so to define ancestor we make use of the ancestor itself and hence this is called a recursive rule and the base condition for the recursion is that X would be an ancestor of Z if X is the parent of Z so together these two clause together would define the ancestor relation and unlike the first approach that we had studied where we use multiple clause like this is one clause to take care of this hierarchy this is another clause to take care of this hierarchy this is another clause to take care of this hierarchy and this is another clause to take care of this hierarchy so here we had four rules this is the first rule this is the second rule this is the third rule and this is the fourth rule so earlier we used four different rules but using four different rules we stop here if we want to go one level up uh, that would not be handled by our four rules so we have to add one more rule so that was the first approach which was not efficient so now in the second approach using a recursive rule where we have only two clause earlier we had like four clause but still it was not complete now we have two clause and this would take care of any number of hierarchy so any number of hierarchy in the chain will be taken care of by just having these two rules where one is the base case for the recursion and another is the recursive rule um, so if you try to ex execute this in SWI prologue uh, this is the output you would get so if we ask the question uh, who are the ancestor of PAM um, no uh, PAM is the ancestor of 
which other person so you will get the answer that Pam is the ancestor of Bob Pam is the ancestor of N Pam is the ancestor of Pat and Pam is the ancestor of Zim so if you run this this is the output you would get uh, so when we have multiple clause to define a single relation that collection of clause is called a procedure so here to define the ancestor relation we made use of two clause and this two clause constitutes a procedure in prologue so with that I would like to end today's class so in today's class we saw what recursive rules are in next class we will see how prologue answers different questions that we put how actually prologue comes up with the answer so we'll stop here for today we'll meet in the next class uh, thank you bye